This is a hospital. It has a disaster plan. So does this one. And this one. And so did this one. The cold facts of a disaster are that no hospital of any size or type of service or geographic location can safely say that the plan it has for what it will do in the next disaster will be adequate. New Bergen, New Jersey. Chicago. Gulfport, Mississippi. New York City. Los Angeles. Every community can, and very probably will someday, come face to face with its own date with disaster. The police department has advised that a major portion of the San Fernando Valley is to be evacuated between these boundaries to the north. This community had a recent date with disaster, but before that date, the steps had been started toward a multi-hospital disaster plan. In every community, someone has to take the initiative. The mayor or a Red Cross director, the local medical association, or a single hospital administrator. In this community, it was a doctor, a pediatrician, director of outpatient services for Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. He wrote a letter to the administrator and medical staff disaster chairman at four neighboring hospitals. You are urgently requested to attend a meeting of representatives from Blue Cross, Children's, Kaiser, Cedars, and Hollywood Presbyterian Hospitals to discuss matters of serious and mutual concern regarding preparations for the management of mass casualties that might result from any environmental community disaster. The meeting has been scheduled with the expectation that all five institutions will send a senior administrator and the disaster committee chairman so that topics of both administrative and medical concern may be identified and appropriate follow-up action initiated. One of the reasons we're here together is, I think, to discuss our mutual concerns over disaster planning, perhaps have some tie-in or some arrangement where we can supply each other with personnel, supplies. Um, well, I'd like to hear some of your concerns that you have so that we don't work independently of one another. Well, I would say we would need community support acting as a group with, with other agencies having input to this whole problem. Now, Blue Cross is represented because of our working relationships with them, and they have a large, organized, administrative backup, which I think we could put to use. Jay, yes, what about this support? This is the kind of supportive action I think that we can lend, you know, to the whole project. This is where we can benefit most. Personnel. The dialogue has been established. Regular one-hour meetings of the committee are held monthly and both the files and the committee grow as problems are identified. Communications, control center and command post, inventory, security and traffic control. This is what we must concentrate on. Alan, can I ask Communications, the doctor said, and control center. The line of authority gap between government, which has the authority, and voluntary agencies, which have the capacity, will have to be bridged. And representatives of other community agencies are marshaled to help solve them. Thus, the resources of much of Southern California become committed to a multi-hospital disaster response. We could use and assist on as right. well as some of the record keeping of the movement of patients through the uh, whole program would be very beneficial to us. This is Grassi, our rule. Between ourselves, our various institutions, certainly communications is our main problem. We can't do anything. We can't communicate with one another. One thing that's been we need to know is the situation with the other hospitals so that we can either ask for help or lend assistance when necessary. I think that's true, yes. Well, we also have to have some means of getting messages in and out of the hospital, especially if the telephone lines are jammed or down because of any kind of disaster situation. Yeah, and I think the list of things that we might need to communicate is almost endless if you're going to keep your hospitals functioning effectively. What about communications with the police department? I believe that communications with us would be helpful, but it appears to me that what you need is an inter-hospital communication system amongst themselves. I feel that you should have a system into which we can link. Where we can talk to one another primarily for medical problems, and then if we need your support, you can link into this somehow. Yes, sir, that's correct. Yeah. So what we're talking about probably is a basic inter-hospital network 
uh, with communication somehow with uh, law enforcement and with fire rescue ambulance, this yeah. kind of thing, and uh, even involve Red Cross and other resources that are around. Well, it seems to me that if we're talking about hospitals and in an inner uh, system and a network of this nature, this is bigger than us. We need help from uh, hospital associations. On that, Alan, I know the hospital... Council a network specifically designed for hospitals was built around a piece of radio equipment, hardly more complicated than a telephone. Operating this disaster radio is a very simple procedure. You just use it like a telephone, except that when you use it, you must press this little lever. Would you like to try uh, and talk to council control? Yes. Just tell them it's Children's Hospital. Do they answer me first? No, you just tell them who you are, and you're talking to council control. All right. Children's Hospital, Ann Wright speaking. Tell them you're making a test, and how do they read you? Try this is council control. Go ahead, Children's Hospital. Thank you. I'm making a test. How do you read me? We read your unit loud and clear. Over. Now you sign off, say, Roger. Roger. And that's about it. The radio network doesn't lie idle. It is at work every day, expediting inter-hospital communications on scores of routine emergencies. Hospital, we urgently need a fetal heart monitor. For hospitals that can make this available, please respond. This is Valley Presbyterian Hospital to Cedars. We can supply that item. Over. We will make the necessary arrangements with your hospital and the highway patrol. KQL 844 clear. Los Angeles air traffic matches that of most big cities. But unlike other cities, in Los Angeles, when the airport reports a potential emergency, the hospitals, through their communications network, can be expediently mustered to standby positions. Alert. Prepared. This is Sentinella Valley Hospital. This is an alert. We have been notified that a passenger plane is approaching International Airport with a landing gear malfunction. Will the following hospitals stand by in the emergency mode? The Southern California network links 128 hospitals, metropolitan and rural, 44,000 square miles divided into areas within which the hospitals communicate. Valley Doctors Hospital, we have 29 medical surgical beds. Each area has one regional control hospital responsible for coordinating hospital disaster communications and providing a link to other areas and related community emergency services. If disaster strikes, all hospitals are alerted simultaneously and the Hospital Association mobile unit at the scene provides on-site communications to and from the mobilized medical resources. While the regional hospital tracks information on casualty flow, blood supply, and emergency room capacities, individual hospitals monitor the situation and request outside help the moment they anticipate the need for it. Uh, Sherman Oaks Hospital, we acknowledge the receipt of four suture sets uh, by ambulance, and we'll be expecting them soon, over. With a major medical center, a prototype system is worked out to assure the timely arrival of skilled medical sorting teams at any disaster site. Get together some medical triage teams, and we've come to you as a large medical center uh, to see about the formulation of these teams. Now, Dr. Gaster, you have around-the-clock coverage. Yes. You could put together a team at a moment's notice. Yes. Some of these gentlemen are paramedics. Yes. Well, now, I think the, the scheme that we're developing here is if this represents our large urbanized area and we should have a, a disaster in a certain segment such as this, it becomes very apparent that the local hospitals uh, need to man their own facilities and they need support from medical centers in other parts of the city. And this is our, this is our concept of the leapfrog where medical triage teams in any one of these large medical centers could be brought by helicopter or other transport into the disaster site and act as the frontline medical triage group. And of course, teams could come from any one of these centers as required. And it would be their job to sort out these victims and dispatch them to the local hospitals, which hopefully would be staffed by their own doctors. So their efforts not diluted by having to go out into their own community. 
Now, with your triage team, we've got this uh, radio, mobile radio, and uh, Jim, let's take a look at this that. This is a 5-watt radio, and this is really our link from the uh, scene of the disaster to the hospital. Preparations get underway for a full-scale multi-hospital disaster exercise 120 days before the event itself. Resembling a sizable military operation, the exercise is given an appropriate code name, EXPLO. Selection of a staging area and arrangements for volunteer casualties and makeup teams are assigned to committee members. And as the countdown continues, warm-up tests are aimed at perfecting a flexible response. This is the hospital council and a test exercise of the central Los Angeles area. Will each hospital initiate its green capacity inventory form and report back within 10 minutes on all items listed under number four, blood supply. This is council control standing by. This is Kaiser Hospital acknowledging your request. We will gather Here, the hospitals are testing one of the keys to this multi-hospital disaster plan, the emergency capacity inventory. Through repeated practice, hospitals on the network can now rapidly gather and exchange information on any item of hospital service or supply. As the day of Explo approaches, hospital public relations departments will increase the flow of information about the coming event to the news media, and graphic material will be designed, printed, and distributed long before the countdown ends. Essential to a flexible hospital response in a disaster is coordination of ambulance services. First to agree and offer their full cooperation are the local governmental and private ambulance agencies. Up Sunset Boulevard, down to the emergency entrances of the hospitals, and then circle back and to pick up more casualties. For this exercise, we're going to observe normal traffic regulations and normal normal speeds, okay? It's a lot easier uh, and uh, a lot safer, really. In Plans for the Explo exercise must include early selection of a staging area, fenced for control, and large enough to accommodate activities during progressive stages of the exercise. A multi-hospital exercise brings the community together by marshalling the available human resources, Explo Day will see the assimilation of many volunteers with a variety of talents and background. Employees of local businesses, schools of nursing, church groups, service clubs, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and Campfire Girls. Having previously received information brochures and submitted signed consent forms, these participants will register and receive a final set of instructions. To apply makeup on Explo Day, five employee volunteers from each of the four participating hospitals will already have been trained in the art of moulage during three one-hour sessions. These volunteers will have been coached to play their parts so that medical hospital and rescue personnel will be stimulated to react as they would to a real disaster. Realism in the makeup of casualties will pay off. It will be instrumental in generating a serious response to the exercise. Well, this is our final briefing session, and we're right on schedule so far, 14 days from the time of our disaster exercise. And I want to bring up first a, a discussion of our traffic control and uh, uh, police support. Sergeant Johnson, have you made the arrangements for us for these teams and so on? Uh, yes, Doctor, I have. We are going to have two black and white vehicles assigned to the front of Children's Hospital to transport the triage teams. The medical triage team that's coming from Arbor General? That's correct. And uh, how many of your Civil Air Patrol personnel are going to be involved? 125 on standby at all times for actual disaster as well. Good. Thank you very much. Um, what about the Red Cross? Well, we're prepared to provide a first aid coverage at the staging area. These will be trained disaster nurses, first aid personnel, to be concerned with anybody who may be injured at the staging area. This would be a real thing. A real thing, yeah. an actual uh, operation. And in addition to that, we're prepared to provide a canteen feeding operation for all of the participants with coffee and donuts and uh, juices and that sort of thing. You got lots of coffee this year. A lot of coffee and this year. I understand we ran out. We ran out last year, last and that was a disaster, and it was brought up as number one on the critique. Now, about critique teams, Commander Broussard, tell us where we are. Well, the Navy uh, 
will be standing by to help in critique along with uh, the representation from Fort MacArthur, approximately uh, 15 people involved in, the, in critiquing the entire uh, uh, system. Now your team consists of various kinds of people of various kinds of experience. Yes, sir. So I will be the senior surgeon involved. We have uh, the one Army nurse along with uh, Air Force nurses and multiple uh, military enlisted personnel who have triaged and been with triaged the patients. And the administrative aspects will be critiqued too. Dr. Messer, you represent the County Medical Association. What's in store for us? The County uh, Medical Society, which has about uh, 10,000 members, has been alerted. And we have appointed several of the members to very important vantage points in the different districts on the, on the field, the triage, and in the different hospitals. Now, the police department is going to show us what the uh, police department will be doing on the day of the exercise. Ron? Thank you, doctor. I have a chart here that uh, we can show and perhaps it make more sense. As you can see, the exercise has been divided into six major activities. Each one of these have a time sequence. Beginning at 0800, the players report to the Moulage area, and that will carry through 900. The CPX play begins at about 840. At 915, transportation of the injured commences and will terminate about 1130. Hospitalization shortly thereafter. And then the casualty information center operated by the police department will begin shortly after exercise play and concludes uh, long after the hospitalization and transportation has ended. Uh, doctor, we have taken each one of these areas and included them in an operation plan, and it's reproduced in this booklet. Expo 71 on the cover. California Hospital from one place. This is the Los Angeles City Fire Department. This is California Hospital, over. This is a test exercise. There has been an airplane crash in the vicinity of Thomas Starr King Jr. High School. There are numerous casualties at the school and in nearby apartments. Fire rescue units are on the way. Please alert all hospitals. Roger. This is California Hospital to all central area hospitals. This is a test exercise. The fire department has reported a plane crash in the vicinity of Thomas Starr King Junior High School. There are numerous casualties in the school and nearby apartment houses. Will the following hospitals immediately initiate their green disaster capacity inventories? Theaters of Lebanon, Children's Hospital, Hollywood Presbyterian, Kaiser Foundation. This is California Hospital standing by. As the scenario unfolds, regional control contacts hospitals near the scene, and over 300 casualty volunteers are moved in waves of 60 and 70 from a holding area to the disaster site. Side of the building, over. Will you notify Harbor General to go to an emergency mode? We will be communicating directly from the mobile unit, over. Spearheaded by rescue teams trained in casualty work, the fire department is the first agency to arrive, exactly as would have happened if this had been a real date with disaster. Medical sorting, triaging, begins at once, followed immediately by first aid. standardized disaster tag records the first glance field data upon which succeeding medical judgments may be based, thus initiating a chain of information from the disaster site to the hospital bed. Good morning, I'm Chief Miller from the LA City Fire Department. We've uh, commenced first aid on the victims here. We've estimated close to 300. Okay, we have the hospital mobile unit here now. Now, what assistance are we able to give you at this point? We're gonna need the medical sorting team out here to assist us in the sorting of the victims. Okay, let me radio for that right away. Uh, medical liaison? This is Mobile One, the California Hospital. California Hospital Medical Center, over. Yes, California Hospital, we urgently need the medical sorting team from Harbor General Hospital. Would you initiate that right away, over? California Hospital. Fireman Hall, uh, we're going to need a lot of help in dispatching these ambulances out of here. Can you help with that? Yes, I can coordinate fire department. This is mobile unit to California Hospital. Right over. Yes, we uh, will need a capacity inventory of the hospitals in this vicinity right away, over. 
For your medical sorting team to go to the scene of the plane crash at Thomas Starr King Junior High School. Over. This is Harbor General acknowledging your request. The medical sorting team will be dispatched to the site immediately. Harbor General Hospital standing by. Dr. Gaster, would you please call surgery and get them to alert the triage team? Larry, give Central Supply a call, would you please, and find out when they can get the supplies up to the heliport. Bob, call the blood bank and find out how much blood is on hand and how much is available for dispatch to the scene of the disaster. Oh, Larry, we're starting at the uh, blood bank report now. We have uh, on hand 25 units of a positive. While the medical sorting team prepares for its departure, the most serious casualties, triaged by the fire department, are already arriving at nearby hospitals. Leapfrogging in by helicopter from outside the disaster area, the medical sorting team arrives from Harbor General Hospital. This rooftop heliport is, in fact, the nearest place to the disaster site that a helicopter can safely land. On the street below, police cruisers stand by waiting to whisk the team of medics off to the disaster site. An experienced critic, one of many assigned to the exercise, will later provide an evaluation from which the multi-hospital plan can be corrected and improved upon. Trained in the art of field triage, the triage officer takes control of the medical sorting identifying priorities for care and evacuation and coordinating the activities of all available manpower. Resuscitative and stabilizing tasks are assigned to members of the team and carried out instantly. The acute emergency victim is given transportation top priority, but whenever possible, the walking casualties fill extra spaces or help take care of the more critically injured. This is Kaiser. We are no longer able to effectively handle burn cases at this time. Over. This is Hollywood Presbyterian Hospital. We can take five more burn cases. Over. Roger, Hollywood. We'll dispatch those cases to you. Over. The continued arrival of emergency vehicles places an ever-increasing demand on the hospital's resources. Practicing physicians, summoned by their hospitals, respond immediately. Assuming leadership roles, they direct the essential resorting and care of the incoming casualties. And while all the victims of a disaster exercise are being managed, the real work of the hospital continues, unimpeded by the make-believe activities. Services for the really sick are assured by plans drawn up weeks before the re-evaluation of a patient's condition takes place at every available opportunity, for his condition may suddenly change. From the emergency entrance on into the hospital lobby, up elevators, and through hallways, to operating rooms and wards, the Explo casualty traffic flows. This is Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. Uh, we can With every hospital listening in, response to an urgent request can be immediate. Uh, we'll send it to you on the next ambulance available. Over. Roger, we acknowledge that. This is Mobile One clear. Little benefit can come from the learning experience of an exercise unless it is followed by a documented evaluation. I'd like to turn the podium over to Commander Broussard, the military critique team. Nick, will you tell us officially what you've found in this program? Thank you, Dr. Finley. I'm going to pick on you only a little bit, maybe enlighten a few of you that I saw in action at the disaster site, and I'm not personally after you, okay? This is an overall comment. I know it's hard for doctors to play emergency and play surgeon and play this and play that, so we'll have to have some improvement along this line, and if you figure that you're going to be anything less than adequate, then you're working at about the right range because uh, you can just not locate 20 nurses or 30 nurses in 20 minutes. And this becomes a problem. We should stress more the resuscitation at the disaster site before they ever move, because you're going to have about a 30% mortality rate on these people. And the time to get them is at the triage site. So one doctor should quickly run through the area, 
to see who's there, what's there, how bad are the casualties. And he may want to direct this medical triage team to take care of this one, this one, this one, and this one. Then the rest we'll look at in the next three or four minutes. Maybe we need to move the ambulance dispatch officer over another hundred feet because the fire chief was so loud with the bullhorn. He just put him down completely. Every time he began hollering about a stretcher here, a stretcher there, there was a fire chief directing his 25 firemen. He needs a bullhorn at the scene of the disaster uh, to allow a stretcher bearer to uh, have a syncopal episode to faint. Well, that's all well and good because this is going to happen to you. These 18-year-old kids who are falling around a man, all of a sudden he's going to die. And these kids have never seen death before. And they are going to drop. Now you have not only a dead person, but you have two passed out CAP people to take care of. Panic you haven't seen until you have a massive disaster. Panic. Disaster. February 9. Earthquake. 2,300 injured, swamp, hospital emergency rooms. Four hospitals destroyed. 1,100 patients to be evacuated. The major medical centers organize their triage teams. From Children's Hospital, the triage trunk and medical sorting team are airlifted to the scene. Supplies in the disaster area are running short. Blood, sutures, incubators. Five hospitals have no water. Others, only a muddy Hospital trickle. Council to all Southern California hospitals on the radio network, please stand by for urgent message. The Van Norman Reservoir Dam is breaking. Chlorine gas is also escaping. Hospitals in, within the boundary areas are asked to begin to transfer patients immediately. In this building, 84 victims lie trapped. This was a date with disaster. Triage. Medical sorting teams leapfrogged in from outside the disaster area apply life-saving measures to the victims extricated from the debris. This is Mobile One, the Valley Presbyterian Hospital. This time it's for real. We need replacements for the medical sorting teams up at San Fernando Vets for both 4 o'clock and midnight tonight. Can you arrange... A matter of life or death. And so is the need for hospital network communications at the scene. Well, now, we got an opportunity here to discuss our recent experiences in the earthquake and see what we can do to improve our reaction to a community disaster. We must learn how to develop and improve our inter-hospital transportation resources. We had some frightful experience on the heliport, on the rooftop heliport. We had gravel and soot flying around. We had an awful lot of noise. We couldn't communicate with our command posts and so on. I think we really concluded that the rooftop heliport is a very dangerous thing as well as a good thing. There's no doubt that in this earthquake experience, the use of the helicopter and for things other than patient, every hospital needs to either have a heliport if possible or at least an area where they know that they can be cleared for helicopter landing. Bringing supplies, bringing key personnel to disaster areas, I think that's where we develop further. I think the main problem still is the coordination of our various radio networks. The thing, again, it comes right back to our whole radio net, but every hospital is not going to have radio. I don't think we're saying it relies entirely upon radio. I think everything, a runner is important, yelling out the window to somebody down in the street is important, telephone is important, radio is important. The advantages of our radio network is one, I'm talking now, I could be talking to 144 hospitals all at the same time. So we're only saying that if all these other things are cut off for one reason or another, then you're left really with only one resource or radiating. If it's working or you have one. Well, we had 128 of them working during the <laughs> earthquake, and that's pretty darn good sure when a million people didn't have a telephone. Communications, transportation, medical triage. A few of the problems encountered by this group in their search for a satisfactory multi-hospital disaster preparedness model. A tested and tried plan with some solutions and some more problems. For a disaster plan is never, and can never be, complete. And so the cycle must repeat itself, from the startup dialogue to testing and critiquing the plan. Disaster preparedness is not postponable. Disasters do happen. No community is immune. Someday yours may have its date with disaster.
message coming through. The passenger and the council control, go ahead, please. We're in the hospital, Trevelli Presbyterian, over. Presbyterian acknowledges hospital council, over.